Hello everyone, welcome to eTech Facebook Live Fridays. I'm Tech Bob, and today we're talking about the boot loops. If you saw our email campaign that went out, boot loop seems a little vague, so what I'm gonna start off with doing is explaining what a boot loop is and uh, the most common sort of scenarios. Um, there's six that I'm gonna be covering today as far as common causes of a, of a boot loop and how to avoid them. So first off, what a boot loop is, is when your phone never fully powers on or stays powered on for an extended period of time, you have what we uh, we usually refer to as an instant boot loop, where you see the Apple logo and then the phone immediately turns back off or the Apple logo goes away and then comes back on. That doesn't let you into the phone at all. And then you have a scenario, what we refer to as a delayed boot loop, where the phone will be on for maybe a couple minutes, but then it'll go to Apple logo again and then power up the rest of the way. So. That one could just be a power cycle or turning off and back on, but it can also still be considered a boot loop because technically it's rebooting and you're stuck in this infinite loop until you fix something. So starting off with the first common cause of a boot loop is just pre-existing damage. That's why a good intake is super important to do because for example, this phone here on the left, this is an eight plus, just a scrap frame. There's actually no guts inside of it, but you can kind of see here on the camera how the frame is curved on this back side. It's even split here. Now, if you think about this, if there, the phone suffered enough impact to cause the metal to warp, then the board on the inside probably isn't the safest either. So what happens when you have this much damage is you either get uh, individual components on the board that get damaged, like an IC, uh, for example, the CPU, a power IC, the solder between the pads can crack and then you'll end up with a chip that's not fully functional. On the newer models, it have uh, what we refer to as sandwich board. So like this is an iPhone 11 over here. Um, it's a multi-layer board, which is soldered together on the edge to all the pads. If this suffers heavy impact, those joints separate. And if those joints separate, they're responsible for getting current and data from each level or each layer of the board to the other. That can cause the phone to also boot loop. So that's the first thing you want to take a look at is just pre-existing damage. This really isn't a, a tech tip for how to like not break it with a tool. It's just use your observational skill to basically find that before you take on the responsibility and then the customer is looking at you as to why is my phone not fully functional now. So that's a super important one to keep in mind. Um, just have a good intake to avoid taking on that pre-existing damage. So. That was um, heavy frame damage. And I mentioned the frame, the back glass and the screen, if you're missing chunks like this, now this one we ran under a laser just as a, a test, excuse me, foam. But um, if you see heavy damage to the glass like this on the back or the front, that can cause, that gives you an indication that it has a pretty serious drop that um, occurred to this phone. The second one I'm gonna cover is disconnecting the battery prior to disconnecting any other cable. Now, I'll use this iPhone 11 as an, as an example. It already has a screen removed and the battery is disconnected. So you may ask, why is it important to unplug the battery first? The best way to think about this is if the battery is connected and the screen is connected, you have a complete circuit of the phone. If you disconnect the screen while the battery is still connected, you change that circuit instantly. So all that power that was supposed to go to the screen is now going other places. Typically, what that can cause is backlight damage when you plug the screen in or unplug it, but we have seen some cases where it'll blow other components and cause issues with a boot loop. So again, important one here, just disconnect your battery first before connect, disconnecting any other cable, and then during reassembly, you reverse the process, your battery is the last thing to connect upon reassembly. So that's just disconnecting battery first and then connecting it last when reassembling. Uh, the next one I'm gonna cover is knocked off components. So this is a big one. Uh, on the 8 series mainly from what we've seen, which I have an A plus over here. What happens is the battery connector that's over here, it's unconnected right now, but I'm gonna plug it in just an example. There's a lot of components in this area right here, and they are very, very fragile. What we see is tech takes the spudger, just stabs it in there, not really paying attention to that. All you have to do is knock one component loose, and not only can that cause boot loops, but it can cause the percentage of the battery to not indicate accurately anymore. It can cause the battery not to charge anymore, all kinds of issues, but boot loops is one of them. So a way to help avoid this, it's hard to tell on the camera, but the spudger in my right hand looks like a dog shoot on it. The one on my left looks still pretty intact. You wanna use a spudger with a fine tip like this. These things are like 10 cents or 20 cents. They're not very expensive, but this can cause, it can, 
basically tell the difference between am I going to have to have a board level repair done or is it going to work just as it should. So highly recommend using a good quality spudger with a nice tip to it, not one that has seen better days. You can still use this to maybe open a phone to like separate the adhesive, but definitely don't use it to disconnect sensitive connectors where you could damage um, components. Now another thing, when you are using your uh, spudger, you just want to go right below the flex cable connector head and it's very thin so there is no need really to touch the board side at all it's just getting right underneath that and then lift straight up so as long as you're careful with a good quality spudger that it hasn't been worn down you should avoid damaging uh, components on the board or even the connector which speaking of, this kind of goes hands in hand in hand we've seen the connector damaged as well on the board and that typically happens from mashing down the flex cable without having it properly aligned when you're putting in your new battery, you want to make sure that you have the battery aligned with the board. We, t we recommend plugging it in before you glue it down and then unplug it just so the battery isn't plugged into the board, but that way you have your alignment met. Uh, fourth reason that we see uh, common causes of boot loops is a bad battery. Defective parts happen and batteries are included in that. If you have a bad battery, that can definitely cause it. That's why we recommend whenever you're installing a new battery, dry fit the new battery before you pull out the old one and glue the new one in. So basically what that means is you would just take the battery, lay it on top of the old one. These flex cables usually have enough flex to move them to the side. You plug it into the board, test your phone out. If the new replacement battery fixed the issue, didn't cause any problems, you know you're good to go. But if that new battery is causing some type of problem, check another battery or check the original just to kind of cross uh, evaluate and figure out what the cause of the issue is. But just test a different part and avoid whenever possible removing a part or fully installing it before it really needs to be in there. Um, reason number five, I'm gonna to jump to. I'm gonna speed these up a little bit because I noticed I'm already on the seven minute mark. Try not to keep everyone here all day. Um, damaged flex cable. So common scenario we see is on the iPhone 11 and this relates to back glass replacement typically. Now, when it comes to this damaged flex cable, the one I'm gonna be talking about is the power flash uh, microphone flex that's back here. So what happens is not necessarily when the laser runs, but when you pry off the back glass, if whatever tool you're using nicks the cable over here, this cable, when you boot the phone up, you'll it'll be on for about two to three minutes and then all of a sudden it'll turn off, you'll get Apple logo and it'll boot back up. This is that uh, delayed boot loop I mentioned earlier scenario. So in this case, the best way to avoid it is just use extreme caution when you're in this area with your pry tool. What we typically do is we'll use a little bit of heat and some alcohol to help separate the glass because these flex cables have a little bit of double-sided adhesive on there, something the laser won't do anything to because it, it doesn't burn here by default, so it doesn't damage anything. So you want to use a little bit of heat, a little bit of alcohol to help separate that, and that'll help you avoid damaging that power flex cable because if you do damage it, it's not the end of the world, but to change it, it's not the most fun flex to change. You have to take the rear camera out, all uh, the flexes in this area to get to it. Uh, another common one on this phone, or in general, when you're doing back glass replacement, it's you hit the components, it's going to be your charging port, the flex on this bottom side, and you'll see when you laser it, actually this is a good example of it, where the laser didn't hit here, those are exposed areas of the flex where if you hit with your tool, you can cause that damage. Um, extra tip here, we, we preach highly to test as much as possible, so when you're doing a back glass replacement, we recommend testing before the repair even begins, after running the laser, after prying off the back glass, and after the new glass is tied on. That way you have four checkpoints in the process to help identify where something could have gone wrong, and that way it's easier to go back and make that correction versus not knowing and having to just guess where something happened. Um, so that was damaged flex cables. The last one, actually there's two more bonus ones. Uh, or there's this, the, I mentioned six to begin with, actually forgot one more, so technically seven in this video. Uh, screw damage is a common one. It's not as common as it used to be on the older phones, but if you misplace screws, a lot of the newer boards have standoffs that actually go through the whole board, but if you have a standoff, for example, like this one where it doesn't go all the way through, if you put a longer screw into that spot and it drills into the board, you're damaging traces in the board, which can result in causing the device to boot loop. Now, on older phones like the 5S, we had what was called the blue screen of death. Uh, not the window side of, of things, but on the phone side, if you damaged up here where the screen plugs in on one of these two posts at the bottom, you would end up with your phone boots up, 
blue screen and then goes back to Apple logo and you're just stuck in that boot loop. So biggest tip here to avoid screw damage, just keep your shoes organized. If you have a magnetic mat with grid lines that usually works best, I actually have one right under here. Um, I've repaired probably a couple thousand phones by now. I've lost track, but I still like using a magnet mat because even on this anti-static mat, if I do this and bump the table, I could have my screws perfectly organized, but now I have to figure out where they go again. And again, with experience, you can figure that out, but it just makes it so much easier and prevents the issue if you have that magnetic mat. And then finally, final reason here is going to be liquid damage. This is one I thought of later on, but I didn't have any live examples, but I have some older images that I have from just my years of taking pictures. You'll notice they're older models, but we have an iPhone 4S on there. Actually, this is an iPhone 4, I believe on the uh, left, and then I, uh, I believe this was an LG or a, a Motorola, I don't remember the exact model, but it's an older Android phone. So on the left you see it's pretty burnt up on the, the one of the display connectors. What happens is when liquid gets there, it'll short out a component basically because it's jumping current where it shouldn't be, and that'll damage components that have to affect power, expect dis affect display, all kinds of things. So in general, liquid damage isn't good uh, and can definitely cause a boot loop. On the right side, you see there's uh, there's uh, corrosion on the battery terminal. This is a real easy one to identify too. Uh, green color that you see around it. Uh, water damage or liquid damage, you usually see oxidation, uh, rust, or corrosion. Those are the kind of three signs, and obviously if the phone's still wet. So recommendation here is if you see liquid damage like this, either stay away from it altogether, do not offer the repair, or you can do it, but just be very clear with the customer. There is no warranty because there's most likely still going to have, uh, have some corrosion happening long term or oxidation rust. You don't want that on your back uh, as a repair that you did. Um, so with that being said, that was the last reason. I hope these helped out today. Again, these are the most common ones we see. I'm sure there's others out there. I didn't want to have a, long, a list of 10 or 15 of them. I was getting there eventually, but uh, that, just a quick list. Hopefully this helped you in your techs. Um, we'll see, what we'll see is a lot of repair shops with newer techs starting out, they'll fall into the couple traps I mentioned earlier on, but uh, share this video with your techs if you aren't watching live already. Um, the final thing I wanted to talk about was the Gadget Repair Expo. Um, so I'm gonna take these images off and I'm gonna flip the Gadget Repair Expo one on. So as a reminder, it's in Atlanta, Georgia next month from April 5th to 6th. We're actually going to be exhibiting in booth five, and as an update, I will actually be doing a demonstration or a presentation on back glass replacement using a laser live. About I have about an hour time slot, so I'm going to cover everything from how to use the laser to removing the back glass to common issues, troubleshooting, and also profitability. If you're interested in doing back glass repair and haven't uh, jumped into it just yet, it's a really good thing to attend. And as a bonus, if you do use, if you are planning on going, when you check out for your admission ticket, if you type in the code ETECH50, you'll actually get half off the price of admission. So definitely something to check out. And as far as the day I will be presenting, it looks like that's going to be on Tuesday. I'll confirm next week too uh, on our live stream just to be safe, but it looks like Tuesday. I don't know the time yet, but uh, if you are wanting to attend that presentation, keep an eye out for Tuesday some time slot there. Uh, we'll let everyone know as that's confirmed. But thanks everyone for checking in. I hope everyone has a great weekend and we'll see everyone on next week's stream. I have some good stuff planned out, but if there's anything you guys want to see sooner rather than later, drop a comment in the uh, comment section of this video and we'll try to take care of it as soon as possible. Thanks everyone. Have a good weekend.